The VO Meter. Measuring your voiceover progress. The VO Meter is brought to you by VoiceActorWebsites.com Vocal Booth to Go PodcastDemos.com Global Voice Acting Academy and IPDTL. And now, your hosts, Paul Stefano and Sean Daly. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 33 of the VO Meter. Measuring your voiceover progress. Today is a very special episode. No, I'm just kidding. Holidays are coming up, but we are talking about the Mid Atlantic Voiceover Conference, MAVO 2018, and our experiences there. Well, your experience is there. I sadly was not able to attend this year, but I get to listen to all of the wonderful interviews that you and our good correspondent, Ken Foster, took. So if you're listening on the interwebs, Ken, thank you so much for being on the field for me. Yeah, and we had a great time. Hopefully you've been listening to the content we've been releasing over the last couple of weeks. We've been putting out one of the full interviews each day over the last week and a half, and we have a few more to go before we release this full episode. So hopefully you've been enjoying that content. And stay tuned a little bit later when we have a compilation of all the interviews we did at the show. Awesome. I can't wait. It's always so much... uh, I mean, these conventions are always such just a mind blast of just amazing, like, VO nuggets, whether it be performance tips or home studio builds or uh, marketing tips. It's It's just an overload of information. So, luckily, you recorded some of it. And speaking of recording, we're actually recording now using uh, the services of our sponsor, IPDTL. If you're not aware, IPDTL is the cost-effective ISDN replacement. It's great for interviews, for outside broadcasts, and voiceover, recording live at conferences like we just did. And the best part is, there's no special hardware or software required. It works anywhere with an internet connection, even in a hotel. Monthly or annual subscriptions are available, and it runs right in the Chrome web browser. And the best thing is, it just works. Thank you, IPDTL, for being a sponsor of our podcast. Meanwhile, current events. So like Paul said, we recently went to MAVO 2018. We also had another exciting current event happen this week. We've reached 12,000 downloads. That is amazing. Thank you all so much for, for, your, uh, for listening to the podcast, for downloading, for sharing with your friends, and having them download. We really appreciate it, and we're just so happy that uh, so many of you are finding the podcast helpful. So keep listening. If you have any ideas or questions for future episodes, please let us know. So just uh, hit us up on Facebook at the VO Meter or on uh, on our website, VOMeter.com. Yeah, we really do want to thank everybody for listening. As you're fond of saying in the, the Mike Myers tradition as, um, as his character in Wayne's World, we weren't expecting a listener. So to have 12,000 is just completely humbling and overwhelming. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we weren't expecting any listeners. <laughs> exactly. It was truly a, a, a passion, or passion project. So, aside from the, the Mavo content, is there anything special you want to talk about this week in your voiceover business, Sean? Well, let's see. Um, actually, I am participating in a fun little voice acting competition by anime voice actor Chuck Huber. He, it's called the Now Voice This competition. It's like their third year doing it. Uh, I've actually made it to the quarterfinals, so I'm really happy about that. Congratulations. And Yay! Woohoo! So if I win, they fly me out to uh, their studio, and then I get to record an hour segment, or I get a one-hour studio recording, and then get featured in an anime. So that, like, life goal achieved. So keeping my fingers crossed for that, uh, I'm working on my second entry for round two, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can we can make it work. That's really cool. Yeah. So other than that, um, I got a new mic that I didn't need. But <laughs> wow, that's that's but, shocking. Honestly, very very shocking. <laughs> I did so well for so long, and then I just found an incredible deal. You guys have heard me talking about or dreaming, fantasizing about the Gefell M930 for a very long time. Um, it's basically like a TL. Excuse me, the Neumann TLM103 in the body of a TLM-102. It's super, super tiny. It fits in the palm of my hand, and it's just an amazingly well-made, beautiful mic. And uh, to go with it, I got the Rycote Envision USM-L, uh, as pointed out by our good friend Paul Strickverda. And it's Strickverda. Just, uh, <laughs> Strickverda. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do I always have to say it like that? Like, <laughs> gets my heart racing a little bit. Yeah, ever since Pamela, Paul's lovely wife, screamed that in my ear at Uncle Roy's, I feel like I have to say it right, otherwise I'll, I feel guilty. Oh, wow, she was there too? That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, but what about you, Paul? I mean, pretty much other than that, it's business as usual over here. What about yourself? 
Well, I had one of those those valleys we talk about where it gets really scary because the phone's not ringing, the emails aren't coming in, and at least in my book, I start to think about uh, how how am I going to pay the bills? And man, I'm just a hack. I have no idea what I'm doing. No one's going to call me ever again. But luckily, as the ebb and flow of the business goes, right after those uh, those little feelings, and then I actually landed a pretty exciting audiobook project. Um, it's a really popular author, an actual New York Times best-selling author named Richard Iyer. I looked up the sales figures of his previous books and was really excited when I saw this. And luckily, they accepted me. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's a royalty share book. But like I said, it being for a, a best-selling author, I think the prospects are good. And the interesting part about it is that it's a simultaneous release. And if you don't know what that means, it's where the print version of the book is not out yet. And they want to release the print and the audio version at the same time. So it's actually a really tight deadline. And that scared me a bit. But um, once I read through the book and then contacted my, my trusty editing pal, Andrew Bates, we decided we probably can pull it off. I only have 34 days to do it. So with the holidays mixed in, that's going to be interesting. But pretty confident we can get it done. So I'm really excited about, about how that's going to go. And it just goes to show that when you have those valleys, if you hang in there and show some some perseverance, it'll all come back around eventually. It's always darkest before dawn. Exactly. <laughs> very nice. I'm very happy for you, buddy. Thank you. Very cool. So, we're going to get to the fabulous content we have from Mabo 2018. But before that, we need to tell you about our sponsor, Vocal Booth to Go. So, Vocal Booth to Go, as you may know by now, sells patented acoustic blankets that are an effective alternative to expensive soundproofing. They're often used by vocal and voiceover professionals, engineers, and studios as an affordable soundproofing solution. They make your environment quieter for less. Now, they were actually featured at Mavo by me because I was uh, demoing their products for a lot of people. It, it was kind of funny because I had the booth set up and uh, I had the Vomo that I brought that they provided, the voiceover mobile unit, to record the actual content from the show. And then I had some, uh, some business cards of theirs, too, and... What I found was that most people wanted to know about Vocal Booth to go. They weren't asking me any questions about the podcast. <laughs> they, they were asking me well, for I'm prices. Well, I'm sure. I mean, like, it, you kind of had a confusing appearance for them. I'm sure. Like, I'm like, what do you? What is this podcast? I thought you were a rep. <laughs> yeah. It, it, in fairness, you're right. It was a little confusing. But since they've been so good to us as a sponsor, I was happy to to help with them as well. And I know all the products. I knew the prices. I knew how to get them. I knew where the company is. And since this was a local. A show a conference in the mid Atlantic. I was able to tell people exactly how close it was to where they lived, and it worked out pretty well for both of us. Man, <laughs> Vocal Booth to Go has no idea who, like the gold mine they found in you, Paul. <laughs> I think they did. That's why they supplied me with all the stuff and sent me down there and said, You can just take care of it because they were there in 2016. Mm, very cool. No, absolutely. I thought, like, hey, save them money. They didn't have to have any other people like, out there. It's It's good business. Yeah, it was funny though, because then people from the sh from the conference, like the staff, um, our our, uh, our friend Bob Johnson, who is actually uh, one of the, the interviews we did, he was sending people over and said, "Just go talk to Paul. He'll he'll tell you all about Vocal Booth to go." <laughs> <laughs> so up next, we have a very special VO meter shtick. It's the door prize winner from Mabo 2018, Doug Schutz. <laughs> Hey, everybody, it's time for the VO meter shtick. What did he say? It's time for the VO meter. Oh, never mind. The VO meter shtick. Oh, got it. All right, welcome to the VO meter shtick featuring our door prize winner from Mabo 2018, Doug Schutz. How you doing, Doug? Yeah. Fine. I never win anything. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I always say that, too, and then I, I couldn't have pulled that off at Mavo because I won something, and then both of my kids did, too, so that was right out the window. Oh, that was, That's well, amazing. We had, we, had, um, we, were, we were sitting at a table, and we, we all won something. Um, there was like four of us, and there was one guy there who hadn't won anything yet, and I said, man, it's your time. It's karma. You're going to get it. It's going to happen, and it didn't happen. So I was bummed. And it's really for the other corner, opposite corner. Um, from us, one at their table. So that was pretty interesting. I don't know. So, hey, cosmic uh, justice here. But, uh, <laughs> Very cool. Glad I, was, you know, I was keeping my fingers crossed to win this, let me tell you. So, Well, who wouldn't be? It's such a, yeah, such a high value I know. Prize. This, 
so much pedigree and, well, and pizzazz. <laughs> right. And I, I, I think this is my first podcast interview talky thing. This is great. Very cool. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Doug, and why were you at Mavo? Well, I was Mavo uh, one because uh, I'd like to attend something once a year. I went to Atlanta, I think, a couple of years ago. But, uh, you know, moving recently from Chicago to, uh, you know, the Raleigh area to be closer to some family and grandchild, actually. And uh, uh, and this is perfect. You know, I, I kind of found it and I and no, they got they had some great people on it. It was great. I got to been doing a little training with Johnny Heller, and he was there, and got to you know check out and you know and uh, uh, you know Naylor was there, and it was just great. So uh, I wanted to get there and uh, meet people that are closer to me, and uh, it was fun. It was a really lot of fun. It was like you know right in my backyard. So <laughs> and, and and it was small too. That's what I really enjoyed about it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, compared to like Atlanta, um, which I guess has gotten huge. So, well, no, nothing bad about that. But it's um, like the San Diego Comic Con of VO cons, pretty much. It's yeah. pretty big. Yeah, exactly. I, I know. And so, uh, I hope it gets bigger. For, but she, you know, I was talking to her, and uh, uh, she does keep it small. She puts a cap on it, which surprised me. So, yeah, you know, it's really to, uh, to keep that intimacy, like you said, and. Yeah, you can definitely exactly. feel the difference, and because when we took that picture at the end, for instance, you could look around yeah. and, yeah. and realize you had met probably everybody, with the exception of maybe one or two people. Right, right, exactly. I mean, I I felt either I was better at, which I'm pretty good at meeting people I don't know, but at, at Atlanta it was a little daunting, um, and that was two years ago. So um, I, I hate to be trashing them, but I mean, it just it was just easy. You're right. I think I met everybody. You know, at least I came across more people. I knew more people and felt comfortable about milling around um, than ever than any other show I've been to. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, very nice. I mean, it's just yeah. it's just like you said, it's a very different experience. So, like, you might mm -hmm. like the the larger con experience, you might like the smaller one. So, and like you said, it's just so easy. Like, there's there's no distance between you and the other attendees. It's only a couple of rooms. Like, chances are you're yes. going to bump into someone. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, Especially if you're, you're, you're not them. waiting. Yeah, I know. You're right. You know how you get those big ones and you're kind of like, oh, I really want to talk, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, to Johnny Heller. But he's got these six people deep and you're mm -hmm. kind of waiting there. And, you know, and, and this was much, much easier. I mean, it was much easier uh, you know, to approach people and you felt comfortable about it. And, uh, and it was fun sort of not to be the newbie, you know? Yeah, <laughs> totally, <laughs> I, totally. I told everybody the things I screwed up on but uh, and, in my thing. But it was great to, t you know, see. I said it was fun to help people, and that's what it's all about, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, so I, fo I focus mostly on, you know, audio books. I do a lot of different things. I narrate some stuff for the PGA and, um, and that kind of thing. But I'm really trying to get my audio book kind of corner together. And it's a little disorganized right now. I'm trying to fix. <laughs> I'm trying to fix that. Did you go to Johnny's sessions? Yeah, I went to two of two of the three, and uh, it, it's uh, it. You know, he's a lot of fun. You know, this is what I like about this industry, and it was it was apparent at you know Mavo that everybody's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> or pretending you know? to be. <laughs> but, oh, and, and that's okay. I'm an actor. I can pretend to be nice too. But it, that's what was great about it was, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you could go to Scott Brick and talk to him. Super nice guy. You know, Johnny Heller, super nice guy. You know, Rachel Naylor, wonderful lady. I, you know, it was just really fun. And everybody said, like, well, let me help you. No, you, here, um, you know, call me later or here's the guy you need to talk to or no yeah call me up later blah, 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 blah. you know and it's great that's what I, I mean in actors it's kind of like you stand around and go I'm like, well I I have this secret place where I get all these acting jobs I really don't want to share it with you you know mm -hmm. yeah, it's almost so, like we talked about this with uh, I can't remember who it was um, you have to listen back to the other content but there's somebody mm -hmm. I mentioned it to and it's almost like you're thinking they have to be punking me if, if you know that term they can't actually <laughs> be seriously giving me the places where they find jobs <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I, th that came out a couple of times, you know, like like because um, we're in Washington D.C., there was a there's a big government, you know, 
place where they need a lot of uh, narration, voiceover stuff. It's a little tough to get in, but I had no idea. And people goes, oh yeah, you know, it's my bread and butter. And then I like, then I do this stuff, you know, and I try to do, you know, have some fun. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's what's funny about it. So, Doug, it's tell us really what was fun. your what was your biggest takeaway from the conference? Something you can put in action, or maybe you've already put in action because it's been a week and a half now. <laughs> yeah, don't make me laugh. Um, no, it's it's uh, I put it to action. You know, I, I've gotten a couple things from um, uh, Tom Deere that. Uh, you know, I've I've looked at like uh, like I've always I was trying to find a, a CRM that uh, I could you know put stuff into. I keep finding them and then I don't do them because they're so freaking complicated. And I'm not that stupid, but apparently I am. <laughs> um, and so you know, I tried. I found a CRM that you know he he mentioned uh, close C L O Z E that works on your phone, works on your uh, you know your computer. And I've tried, I just, boom, I said, okay, i got to implement this and, and, and get this to happen. So yeah. um, we were talking a little bit about, so, like, now you've got all of this great information. You've got um, all of these tips and potential ideas for marketing your business. Right. What are your goals for this year? What are you going to do with all that golden knowledge? Oh, my God. You, I can't put this on tape. Then I will have to do it. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm making you accountable. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you're accountable. Everybody's going to be asking now, how's it going? And now, yeah. No, the, my, uh, you, what, I, what I want to accomplish this year is I'm going to um, get all my audiobook samples, et cetera, up to, uh, you know, uh, the best they can be through professional guidance from from folks I know and you know get my Ahab uh, directory okay I want to register with all the my goal is to register with all the main book narration places and set up my marketing and my CRM so I can um, uh, execute you know reminders and hey you know I just did this sample. Go, go listen to it. No, keep keep a system in which you know Tom Deere is just you know horribly organized about, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and and so it's uh, uh, and get that all set. To, and I'm going to go to APAC in May, and uh, you know the the big publishers thing in New York for mm -hmm. audiobooks, and and get my act together in that direction and. Uh, I think that's enough for me right now. You know? Very cool. It sounds like yeah. a really kind of getting your ducks in a row kind of year. And like you said, preparing for those opportunities when they come up. So, right. um, so I think right. you've got you've got a great plan on. Uh, you've got a good head on your shoulders. You've got a good plan in place. Uh, just stick to it. And remember, there's still lots of things like you can still continue to grow your business in other ways while you try and right. reach for these plans. Right. So, right. Doug, thanks for being on the VO Meter today. We. We're happy to have you on as our, our door prize winner from Mid-Atlantic VoiceOver Conference 2018. And good luck with the rest of your, your VO year and beyond. Tell us where folks can find you if they do want to hire you. Well, if, yeah, if they want to find me, they could find me at www.dougshoots, uh, and shoots is spelled S-C-H-U-E-T-Z, V-O. So it's Doug Shoots V-O, Doug at DougShootsVO.com. Awesome. Thanks again, Doug, and we'll talk to you soon. Well, thank you so much, Doug, for being a guest on our podcast, and congratulations on winning our raffle. Speaking of podcasts, I'd like to thank our good friend and sponsor, Tim Page of PodcastDemos.com. Tim's team has produced over 1,000 podcast intros for some of the biggest podcasts on the planet. Each demo includes custom-written scripts and hand-selected music and is guaranteed to showcase your voice and talent in the best light possible. With a finger on the pulse of what podcast producers want, you can be sure your podcast demo will sound professional, current, and competitive. And we've talked about this before, but Tim actually produced Paul's and my podcast demos, and all we can say is that he and his team are freaking amazing. His script writer created original scripts that were perfect for my voice and personality, as well as reflective of current popular podcast genres. I recorded in the comfort of my own home studio, and Tim worked his mastering magic. The whole process only took a couple of days, and I couldn't be more pleased with the result. 
Tim is a consummate pro and so easy to work with. So thank you again, Tim and podcastdemos.com. So we're going to get to our fabulous Mavo content in just a second, right after a word from the GVAA. How many times has this happened to you? You're listening to the radio when this commercial comes on, not unlike this one, and this guy starts talking, not unlike myself. Or maybe it's a woman that starts talking, not unlike myself, and you think to yourself, geez, I could do that. Well, mister, well, missy, you just got one step closer to realizing your dream as a voiceover artist, because now there's Global Voice Acting Academy. All the tools and straight-from-the-hip, honest information you need to get on a fast track to doing this commercial yourself. Well, not this one exactly. Classes, private coaching, webinars, home studio setup, marketing and branding help, members-only benefits like workouts, rate and negotiation advice, practice scripts, and more. All without the kind of hype you're listening to right now. Go ahead, take our jobs from us. We dare you. Speak for yourself, buddy. I like what I do. And you will, too, when you're learning your craft at Global Voice Acting Academy. Find us at globalvoiceacademy.com. Because you like to have fun. Hi, everybody. We're live from the Mid-Atlantic VoiceOver Conference, Mavo 2018, with a very special episode of the VO Meter. Measuring your voiceover progress. I'm joined live, trying to fill in for Sean, but probably not as well as, he, as Sean could do, hopefully, by Ken Foster. Welcome, Ken. I, I'm going to try my best. So, anyways, Sean, we're here at the conference, and... Um, Last time, it was you and I here, and we, short, we sort of winged it. Actually, we had this presentation to do a little bit later. Ken's going to join me on stage or maybe just in front of a table. And I'm going to talk about how we really were sort of launching the podcast still when we came to the conference last time. And I'm going to credit the conference with giving us the confidence to, to keep going forward because I never thought anyone would talk to us, let alone some of the guests they had at the conference in 2016. <laughs> well, That's no an amazing one... accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I find that people, like, everyone wants to feel like a celebrity, and nothing makes you feel more like one than being interviewed, both the presenters and the attendees. So, But you're absolutely right. I feel like that really is where we kind of hit our stride and kind of solidified our idea with what we were trying to accomplish with the podcast, right? With just trying to be, like, genuine and helpful for people, like, where we're at and before and after. Yeah, it was really great. We got to talk to... Uh... Nicola Richards, Sunday Muse, uh, among others. Who am I missing? Like you said, it was Jason Lanier White and Sunday Muse, and uh, lovely Nicola Richards. And I believe Sunday and Nicola are going to be there, both are both there this year, right? They are as well. So that brings up a good point, Ken. Who are you most excited to to meet or talk to? Uh, Kari Waldron. I'm signed up for her breakout session. I'm really excited about that. Joe Cipriano. Nice. Um, seeing her more again. That's always inspiring for me. And for people who don't know who Herb Moore is, could you tell us a little bit more about that, Ken? Uh, he is an animator on uh, Disney Animation, and uh, usually his session involves him creating some kind of a visual and uh, people kind of chiming in with different voices and characters that they would take to uh, bring that character to life. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's really cool to think about it from, a, from an animator's perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, a, it's a, a, an angle you probably wouldn't think of, but obviously that's where our work is going. Sometimes mm -hmm. in reverse order, sometimes the voice is first, sometimes the animation is first. But if you're working in animation, it's good to know, you know where your voice is being, being used and how. Well, speaking of uh, alternative insights, I know that uh, Sarah Jane Sherman, uh, casting director for projects like Disney and uh, Warner Brothers, is going to be there again this year. Uh, she's actually one of our new animation coaches over at GVAA, at Global Voice Acting Academy. And so if you're at Mavo, definitely like go to her workshops, just listen to her, say hi. She's an amazingly talented director, and hopefully you can do, or do a session with her. She's really great. Yeah, I'm excited about that because I'm actually bringing my kids to the special kids program on Sunday, and they get to work with Sarah all day. So that's, that's really awesome. That's so cool. So I think now is as good as time as any to talk about how to sort of approach being at a voiceover conference because a lot of people like are curious about it. They don't know if it's a worthwhile investment or not. Like, do you like? Is it okay if you're a complete beginner? Do you really need to have some experience? So, um, so what do you guys think? What What do you think is like the the overall ROI or return on investment on going to a conference like this? Well, I can start. For me, it's all about the people. The reason we're doing this right now is because I met Ken at Mavo 2016. So did so I. That's true. <laughs> I think I knew him from social media, but 
when I walked in and saw the purple hair, I was like, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> so we walked up and had a chat, and now two years later, he's here helping us at, 2000, at Mabo 2018. So, and that's not the only person I met that, at that day that sort of helped me solidify the relationships I had. But for me, that's really what it's all about, is meeting the people and learning more about them, not only for their business, but personally, and getting to hang out with them and, and sort of peel back that veil that, is, that hangs over the relationship with social media and getting to know somebody in, in real life. Absolutely, I would agree. It's, it's about the people and about the handshakes you make and the conversations you have. Uh, making yourself available, being open, being social. Uh, the ROI may not be as tangible because you're meeting peers and you're establishing, you know, initial contact with people face to face instead of online through a, a like or a friend request. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're going to put a face with a name, shake a hand, maybe share a drink, and you know, have a conversation about something that's not voiceover. Uh, I'm so glad that you brought that up, Ken, that it's not necessarily a tangible or a financial return on investment because you don't go to these things to get hired. Like, it's much more about professional development and networking with the people in the field that you are pursuing or want to pursue. And like, so like I said, you don't, you don't want to go there with the mindset of like, here's my business card, hire me, please. Like, because you're talking to your colleagues, not, not voice casters, right? These are fellow talent, not casters of talent. And, but even then, if you make a good impression, if you build strong connections, you, it might come back to, er, to help you in other ways. Like fellow talent might refer you to a project that they're not appropriate for, but they think you'd be a great fit for. Or uh, any number of other things can happen. Like you might start a podcast with someone you met at a conference. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think what you'll find is the, the, re the returns are not immediately tangible, but you'll see them down the line, especially if you, if you stick with the business and you have staying power in the business. For instance, that same Mabo 2016, I met Jason White uh, because I stuck a microphone in his face and we interviewed him. But then I did some coaching with him later on that year and found out that I, I really could do some character work. And then what I found out was that I started to get opportunities from these people. I, I received auditions from Sarah. I received auditions from Jason because I made that relationship, even though it was two years ago, because we maintain that relationship, those opportunities present themselves, and it's all, it all bears fruit down the line. You have to keep that in mind. You're not going to see anything probably tomorrow. No one's going to call you on, on Monday and say, hey, remember we met 24 <laughs> hours ago? I have a job for you. But the, yeah. it'll bear fruit down the line. And that's wonderful. Like, I remember two years ago, like, you actually talked, like, man, I never thought I could do character work. Like, you, you were just like, uh, audiobook, narration, maybe commercial, but not character. So, I mean, it's great. It, it really is a great way to experience different facets of voiceover that you might not be familiar with or not realize that you're interested in. And so that kind of segueing from that, it really is a great place for beginner talent, I think, because it's just a... A wonderful way to experience so many different things about the voiceover industry and to learn so much about it. Yeah, like 500 or more might sound like a large investment, but considering how much you could be spending on training and equipment and setting up a home studio and all this other stuff, it might be like it might be a more worthwhile investment for you, even if you use that to realize that voiceover is not for you. And you can't ask for a better way to get started if you are a beginner here at Mavo. We have Dan Friedman, who can help you set up your studio. Tom Deere, who can tell you how to market your business, as yep. well as Celia Siegel. Bridget Real is doing the, uh, the VO for Newbies thing on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. So that's targeted right into that, that pocket. It really is a place of good karma and just positivity and support of it. Nobody is judging anyone there and keeping like the presenters are all professionals, but they understand that the people who come to these are at varying levels of their career or maybe are not even official or like officially professional voice talent yet. So and they're completely um, like they're so down to earth and they're so like approachable. So you really should. And I know a lot of voice actors tend to be introverts. I know I am. But you really have to challenge yourself to break out of your shell a little bit. And because, I mean, these are, this is your tribe, man. These are all kindred spirits. And even if you're not talking about voiceover, you're sure, like, I mean, I have made dozens of, like, fast, lifelong friends from these kind of events. So really, it I can't stress enough, you get out what you put in. So be, come from a place of giving when you attend. 
Exactly. And speaking of great atmospheres, uh, a couple of people are blowing up my phone about not being at the bar. So Ken and I are going to skedaddle and get down and mingle with some of the people and, uh, and get ready for tomorrow. I hate you guys so much. <laughs> <laughs> so All we'll right. see everybody tomorrow morning when we get started with the presentations and, and the panels. And uh, we'll, we'll have another talk then. All right. Bye, guys. Have a wonderful time, you two. Ken, thank you so much for contributing to our podcast. And everyone else, have a wonderful day. Okay, so welcome back to The Floor here live at Mavo 2018. I'm now joined by Tom Deere. Tom, how's it going so far? It's going good, man. How are you? I am well. Good. So I sat in your session this morning. Tell me what you're looking to, to get out of a conference like this when you come to present. I come to spare people of all the things that I screwed up. I really do. I really believe in that. Uh, the voiceover industry has been so good to me for such a long time. I would not be a successful voice talent or coach without the amazing community of voice talent that have guided me and helped me and advised me and gave me hugs when I need them and smacks on the butt when I need them. So um, what I want to get out of it is, is knowing that I have been able to even just help one person avoid one mistake or to help one person look at themselves in a slightly different way, to be a little bit more forgiving of themselves. Uh, because we're all alone in these booths, we all think our problems are unique, and we don't know if we understand the industry or, or ourselves, or what to do or what not to do, or how often to do it, or am I doing this right, am I doing this wrong? But if I can help validate or affirm even one person, to help them know that they deserve to be successful, they're on the right track, they're going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes, I make mistakes all the time, and I've been doing this for a long time. If they realize that and they are just that much more set up for success, then, then I, I feel like that my, my time and my presence here has been, has been worth it. That's great. I really resonated with that this morning when you said about your most popular uh, response to your blog is when you talk about your screw-ups mm -hmm. and I found the exact same thing to be true. Um, my most popular Instagram post, even though I haven't done that many, was one I posted where I got rejected for an audition at 7.05 in the morning from Chicago. 7.05 Eastern Time, which means it was 6.05 there and I was so bad that the, the program director got back to me that quickly and, <laughs> and said, no, no thanks. And that was hugely popular on Instagram. <laughs> it's funny like that, isn't it? Well, like I said in the class, we admire people for their flaws, not their virtues. And when you say, I made this mistake, especially, you know, uh, someone like me or a Johnny Heller or a Joe Cipriano who's been doing this forever, um, when we share, this is how I blew it, people can identify with that. And they go, okay, so I'm not the only person. They are not perfect. You know, Johnny Heller had a first audiobook. 700 audiobooks later. Right. He did the first one, and I bet you it wasn't perfect. Welcome back to Mavo 2018 on the VO Meter, and I'm now joined by Stanley or Stan Fisher. How are you doing, Stan? I'm good, man. I'm having fun today. Awesome. So tell me what brings you to Mavo, or, or what are you doing at a conference like this? Uh, I do audio production on top of voice work, and one of the things I created a couple years ago during a transition in my life was called My Demo Dude, where I had at the time was doing a lot of demo work for a couple people in the industry, a couple companies, and I wanted to get away from that and just focus on my own control over how we were creating that content. And what I, the reason I, the bigger reason I did it is because I love the creative conversation. I love working with other artists, and I found more value there to sit with someone and serve their life by helping them create a portfolio that was going to serve their career, and maybe along the way build a healthy relationship with that person. Person. And from there, I've scaled it back even more. Where if the relationship isn't right, then I won't touch that either. You know, I want to make sure that on all ends of spectrum, the experience is amazing for both of us. So I'm not a mass production house. This is not my meat and potatoes. I do not live off of this. It's just a sub brand to what I do on a daily basis. Awesome. I'm curious because I know you're based in my hometown of Baltimore. Yeah. How is that as a as a home base for production in VO? It actually has has increased my workload because there's not a lot of people in the area touching into it. And what a lot of people don't know is there's a lot of national brands out of Baltimore. A lot. 
And I've networked recently with two or three brands that are now using my work for their companies. And I've also networked with a PR firm that is responsible for the creation of commercial content for 13 national brands. Wow. And I did not see that as much in the Carolinas. They exist, but not as much as you would think. And so doing my research, a lot of the reason these national companies are in the area is because they were established in the early 1900s. And you got the Inner Harbor and you've got a city that's trying to rebuild itself. It, a lot of companies are coming out of the north. There's a lot of people moving out of New York. They're, they're leaving New York State because of the taxes that they're paying. And so they're coming a little bit more further south because... And Maryland's that much better, really? Well, for them... It's like uh, a thing for the tax burden, too. Sometimes. Yeah. And it's just, it's not as bad, though. So mm. if you do your research, New York is pretty rough. New York okay. State, because I have a, my family's from there, and my, my uncle's a truck driver. He spends far more in taxes to the point that he wants to leave because it gets worse and worse each year. And so more and more people have left those areas to come further south. And you also throw in the factor of the weather and stuff like that. Even though the weather isn't the greatest up in the Baltimore area, it's still better than going up further north. Yeah. And um, But anyway, that's just something I've noticed since I've been here for the last year and a half. If there was a need for the things that I do and supply to that area because of the riots, businesses that had to shut down for that particular area. And I'm right in the middle of the Arts District of Baltimore, and there's a surge of, recre of them recreating and breathing life into the city. And there's a huge hole creatively for people like us to step into the equation um, to give clients a direct connection so they don't have to outsource outside the city. So, welcome back live to Mabo 2018. We're here with Rachel Naylor from the VoiceOver Network. Yeah. Tell me about your experience so far at the conference. It's been fantastic. So, uh, thank you for having me on uh, to start with. And uh, yeah, it's lovely to be here. Really, really excited to be back in the States um, and to be at this wonderful conference, which is, um, Val's done an amazing job. It's, it's really, really great and lots of lovely people. So, yeah. I agree. So, when you target uh, your appearance at a conference like this, what are you hoping to get out of it? Um, when I come to things like this, I just I, I want to meet as many people uh, in the industry. I want to help inspire people, and I love seeing people at the beginning of their journey and watching them grow and watching their careers flourish. And um, yeah, the Voiceover Network, which is the company that I founded and that I run, is all about helping, supporting, and strengthening the voiceover industry. And it's about bringing the the, the industry together. Um, agents, producers, casting directors, voiceover artists uh, from around the world. So we started in London and we've, we've grown now. We have lots of members here in the States as well. And we're going to start doing events over here. And yeah, it's exciting. It's all You're good. You're spending an awful so. lot of time the stateside, aren't you? I am. Yeah, this is my third trip uh, this year. And I do, I love coming out here. It's, um, yeah, it's just wonderful to, to come out to these events and surround yourself with other forward thinking, um, you know, proactive people in the, in the voiceover community. So, yeah. It really is a community, isn't it? You get that, you get that feeling of camaraderie, of, of having somebody as your, as your wingman, somebody by your side to go through it yeah. together. It's really fantastic. Definitely, definitely. And it's, it's very unique. I don't, I, I don't think there are any other industries like the voiceover industry in terms of that sort of wonderful community. Um, and because we're actors, most of us are, you know, well, all voiceovers, I think, is acting. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not the same as kind of on-screen and theatre actors who, you know, you have to think about your appearance and there's there's something lovely about voiceover artists because it's about our personalities and, and, and successful voiceover artists, you know, we, we are getting booked to interpret scripts. So you have to have quite a big personality to be able to do that. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, it's lovely. I think also because we spend a lot of time sitting on our own in a little black box it talking to that. ourselves, <laughs> <laughs> that when we come to these events, you know, it's just lovely. Everybody's so, so wonderful and, um, and share, you know, there's a lot of sharing and a lot of kind of helping each other. So, yeah, it's wonderful. You started out with an acting career before voiceover. Right? Yes. And yes, I did. What, yeah. what brought you to that transition? Uh, oh, um, I, I'm still an actor, but I, yeah, I mainly do voiceovers now. Um, and I think for me, the big thing was feeling in control. I loved having a voiceover business, and I, I remember feeling like 
I also wanted to start a family and think, and, and I could just see the structure of having a voiceover business. Plus, the first time I got in front of a microphone, I just had that moment, um, you know, when I was like, I am home, this is where I'm meant to be. And I, like a lot of people, in my early days of my career, I really struggled. I mean, it was tough back then. You had to have an agent, and I couldn't get an agent. And I remember having to, like, make CDs and send them in the post and you know all that kind of stuff we don't have these days it's so much easier uh, and the fact that it is much you can as long as you've got the kind of the the drive you can get your own work whereas when I came into the industry it was really hard to get your own work you, you know you didn't have a home studio you had to have an agent and it was I remember sort of pounding the streets kind of, no this is I'm going to continue and so think that I'm, I'm in a good position with the VoiceOver Network because I totally understand that, I relate, and I want to share the information that wasn't available when I started. Welcome back live to Mabo 2018. I'm now joined by the fabulous Nicola Richards. How are you this morning? Marvelous. How are you doing? I am doing well. <laughs> So you are a host on the opening night. Tell us how, what that experience was like. Uh, first of all, I think I'm still recovering. <laughs> <laughs> As am I, actually. Um, well, it was a lot of fun because we hadn't done something like that before. So to have the uh, the beginning, the intros, and then into the karaoke, it was a, it was a lot of fun. But as I said, I am still still recovering. But it was a lot of fun. A lot of singers. You yeah, you sang. Didn't I you? tried to sing. I don't know if you could call it singing. <laughs> <laughs> bit like my sweet Caroline. I did. Um, I did the power of love from, yes, you from did. Back to the Future, and did not realize how high the key was. So about <laughs> halfway through, my voice started cracking. I had to bring it down here and completely change the song. It was not pretty. There's actually a video of it's, it that I think Anna Clements uh, tweeted out. I think. I think it got like that went viral, didn't it? Uh, probably. <laughs> So tell me what you've enjoyed about the conference so far. Have you had a chance to go to any sessions? I have actually. This time has been really good for that because when I was here a few years ago, I was doing things at different times. I didn't manage to see as much as I wanted to. So this time, I feel like I've seen most people, most of our guest speakers, and I've been to a couple of breakout sessions. Um, but for me, this conference is just, well, I get inspired. So I found it massively inspiring once again and got a few different tips. I went to a, a gaming for video games, uh -huh. which I've never sort of even looked into before, but I found that fascinating, so that could be something I would look more into, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, unfortunately, we're almost done. It's Sunday oh, morning, it's Sunday afternoon. Is there anything you're still looking forward to this afternoon? Um, so, there's a couple of things. I know Herb Moore has got a um, session today, and Mark Scott as well, so I'm looking forward to those. A um, bit more networking, a mm -hmm. bit more inspirational videos with people, probably. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Have you done a lot of live videos here? Uh, I've been doing a few. Okay. Getting, and sort of trying to get clips of people, like what, what's in, been inspiring for them throughout the conference. It's been quite interesting. Lots of different answers. So what's your biggest takeaway? When you leave the conference, you go back, or are you going back, back home? Back to this? England, and then I'm going literally a day later to Lisbon, because I'm going off on my travels again. That sounds fun. So yes. what's the biggest thing you're going to take away from the conference, you think? I think, and this is something I'm quite passionate about anyway, but the importance of being true to yourself, especially in your voice career and things like that, because that seems to have been quite a theme. I know Kari Walgren, she spoke about that, about being authentic and genuine mm -hmm. and following things that you are truly passionate about. I feel like I'm going to do more of that. That's great. I noticed that as well. Kari mentioned it, like you yeah. said. Uh, I know Gabby Nistico mentioned it in her session. Yeah. And even Joe Cipriano in his promo session talked about not being all all the time amped and, and, and up in the air, you know, really amped up to do the promos that you think of that he does. Yeah. And he found a lot of his work recently with CBS by bringing it back and being more more conversational. Yeah, so exactly. It really is a theme. And that's a, I think that, yeah, that's a thing that I'll definitely, the biggest one I'll probably take away. Awesome. Well, thanks yeah. for being with us this morning and Thank enjoy you. what's left of the show. Thank you very much. So welcome back to the VO Meter live at Mavo 2018. I'm now joined by Mark Scott. Mark, how are you doing? It's been so long since we talked. I know. It's weird. It's almost like uh, I missed you. <laughs> I missed you too. But as where's as Sean? It just doesn't feel the same. Where? You know, we actually thought about piping him in. Um, we did there it yesterday go. for a little pre-show Ken and I did, but it's a little difficult on the floor here. To, you'd have to wear headphones. It'd just be weird. Yes, I understand. So tell me about what you're looking to get out of the conference. You know, I love what's going on this weekend in that I love that it's been intentionally kept small. And it's cool to walk down the hallway and, and be able to talk to people and spend a little bit of time with people. 
and it's nice to have small a smaller number of people in the session as well because it gives me more time to address personal questions like you know you can't always do that when there's 50 or 60 or 100 people in your session right but when there's only a dozen or 15 20 whatever it makes it a lot easier so i think that's really cool so i like i like that aspect of it yeah, it's small by design. Yeah. And I think it really works well. This is our yep. second, my second year here, second year with the podcast. And just like in 2016, I really love that intimate atmosphere. You really yep. get to know everybody. Yep. It's cool. Yeah, it's a, you get to rub elbows and uh, say hi and, you know, put faces to names and all that. For sure. Much yep. more than bigger ones, for sure. Yep. Don't feel like you're getting lost in the crowd. Yeah, so you're doing some sessions here. Tell us about those. Yeah, I'm doing a uh, marketing fundamentals for voice actors. Um, and the beautiful thing about that actually is once you learn the basic foundations of, of marketing, it really applies to anything. So, you know, it's a really popular thing in 2018 now for people to have side hustles and stuff like that too. And so um, not only are you going to draw value from that session in being able to step up your voiceover business, but if you got something going on in the side as well, maybe some of the principles are going to apply to that. So I'm really looking forward to that session this afternoon. And then tomorrow, uh, five essential goals for your voiceover business and the one word that will kill it all, which... Um, I know I've done a good job on that title because a lot of people have been like, ooh. So now we'll see whether that converts and they all show up for the for the session or not. But a lot of people are definitely intrigued by it. So I'm looking forward to that one too. That's awesome. Yeah. So aside from your own sessions, what's something you're looking forward to for the rest of the conference, either today or tomorrow? I'll tell you what, actually. I sat in this morning on Tom Deere's uh, session about um, actually, more about the, there. the business. Yeah. That should be required training. If you are going to do voiceover, if you think you're going to do voiceover, his session that we that we sat in this morning, 100% should be a required training course for anybody before they even take the next step forward because I think it's one of the most overlooked aspects of it. Voice actors tend to be creative by nature and, and by you know the, that side of the brain that they operate from, and so many fall short because they don't think like a business owner and they don't treat it like a business and so getting that that business foundation laid down before you dive in will make your life so much easier and I think it will help you grow your business a lot quicker with a lot less pain and heartache so I really wish that there was a way to like make that required learning you can't buy a microphone until, until yeah you. that's it no we're going to talk to all the manufacturers don't sell this guy a microphone and an interface until he's got a certificate from tom saying i took his course well tom did say he lives across the street now from the bnh headquarters so maybe or the bnh store in new york yeah. maybe he could do that Just yeah we got to work that out at the, at the, yeah. door, the revolving door and say uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no not until you take this course welcome back to live at mabo 2018 we're now joined by lisa leonard and ken's back which is nice <laughs> yeah hi paul how are you enjoying the conference so far. Loving it. So glad I came. This is only the first day. I've had, what, four sessions or so, and I feel like I've learned a ton already. And I've been doing this for a couple of decades, so I really, it's a case where you, you can teach an old dog new tricks. I'm just learning some really good, valuable, practical tools, and this is only day one, so I'm pretty happy to be here. Have you been to this conference before? No. I had attended other voiceover events in the past, years past, different one-day trainings as well, but this is my first Mavo. And what was your expectations going in, or did you have any? I talked to some people who recommended it, and uh, they specifically mentioned the smaller group size, which appealed to me. So I am enjoying the fact that I'm seeing the same people, and already the bonding is happening, and a group of us just went to dinner together and had a great time, and I think that there's some value in that small group dynamic. What was your, uh, before you came, since we're halfway through, what was the highlight in your eyes coming here? The expectation yeah, of like what the, I was like hoping. The, the, you're looking forward to the most. Uh, maybe a speaker or maybe a well, session presentation. Branding session. is something that I'm hearing a lot about. And I, I saw Celia speak years ago, uh, Celia Siegel, and uh, I feel that I'm at the stage now in my life where I want to get clearer on my own branding so I can market myself better um, these days when everybody is, is trying to find their own niche, their own brand. So that's what I'm hoping is really going to come out of this weekend and I, I feel like I'm already off to a good start. I, I enjoyed Celia's program this morning and I'll do the breakout with her tomorrow as well. Excellent. Yeah. Unfair question, but what's been your favorite thing so far? <laughs> that is totally unfair. I don't, I don't think I can really answer that, no. But it's so far so good. I mean, I would be very honest and offer some valuable feedback if I feel like this was a bust or a waste of time or we just weren't getting our needs met, but I, I'm very pleased so far with everything. 
And I've been speaking with a lot of uh, experienced voice professionals as well as a lot of newbies are here and it seems that we're all getting value from being here. So I think that's, I don't know how they're finding something for everyone, but we're all getting what we want. So there's magic happening here at Mavo. Mavo magic. Definitely is. <laughs> so one thing that's highlight for me so far, the three of us are in Joseph Briano's promo class. Yes. What did you think of that? Oh, so good. Yeah. I mean, just to get mic time in front of a guy like Joe, who's so awesome, um, that was special. And um, for all of us, we all, you know, just to be working with one of the greats, mm -hmm. uh, it was a wonderful opportunity to get the kind of real-time feedback um, and, and to get his insights, like to just hear how he manages when he's in a hotel room and the client needs him at, to, you know, all hours or two in the morning or something and he has to wake up and sound really bright and happy and, and promo-y and he does it well and that's just kind of a day in the life of this really famous voiceover guy. Yeah. That was kind of cool just to see he's how he does it when he's on the road. Yeah, it was really cool that he actually brought this setup to let us execute, you know, reading promos. And instead of just talking about it, we were like doing it, and you killed it. Oh, thank well, thank you. And he, he directed too, which, which yeah. surprised me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess he's been doing it so long, he should be able to do that. But I wasn't. I, don't, I guess I still don't know. I should have asked him this if it's something he does regularly. But he was able to turn people's performance yes. on a dime, which is yeah. a few directions, including me. We all yeah. we all got something out of it. Yeah. yeah. That was a good, that was a great session. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're through two days, well, if you came last night, it was mostly just partying, but we're through <laughs> the partying of, of the pre-show, and, right. and now today, what are you looking forward to tomorrow? Well, tomorrow, the breakout about the branding, uh, that's one thing, and then, what else, uh, is on the schedule tomorrow. I don't know. I'm just an open book. Whatever comes to me, whatever <laughs> lessons I can learn, I'm going to be really open and uh, soak it all in, absorb it all like a sponge. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Glad you're enjoying the conference. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Fantastic. see you. Bye. So we're back live at Mavo 2018 with Johnny Heller. How are you doing, Johnny? Very well. Thanks for having me on your uh, your shindig here. Thank you for, for appearing. We're so glad to have you. So tell me what brings you to a conference like Mavo. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I got contacted by Val Kelly, who runs this, uh, gosh, I can't remember, earlier in the year to see if I'd do this. And I've done, I do the, I do my own workshops, the Johnny Hill Explained Difference Workshop and the New England Narrator Retreat. And I've done a lot of stuff. And she wanted, I guess, somebody to come out and talk about audiobooks, the genre for which I'm best known. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I welcome the opportunity. And I love doing so. I love, it's fun to go share what you know and meet new people and, and give them, give them a, and just kind of give them the, open, open the doors. There's so many people want to do what we do in the voice of the world. And some actually should do it and some actually shouldn't. But, to, you know, yeah, it's not for me to pick the wheat from the chaff, but to tell them what it's all about. And then let them take steps forward. So it's a wonderful experience and I enjoy hotels. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the way you do it. I sat through your session in View Atlanta last time and I still use a quote I heard you say in that session about reading ahead. Somebody asked the question, do you read the book ahead? And you, you said, um, the last person who should be surprised by the end of the book is you. <laughs> I, I just love that quote. That, well, there's real true stories about people who I know, with, I'm not going to name names, who have done books and found at the end that the character that they voiced with whatever accent they gave them was not the accent the author intended and the author didn't reveal to the end. I did that actually. One of my so, first audio books I made that mistake before I trained with yes. our friend Sean Pratt. Oh I, good, uh, yeah. It was a book about space aliens. So none of the, none of the character names were English. They were all, almost like Klingon. Yeah. So I get to this general yeah. and I selfishly assume it's, it's your bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I do the whole book <laughs> and then I get to chapter <laughs> 9, 9 of 10 and, and, I, and I see the general walks in with her troops and I said, Oh no, yes. <laughs> it ruins everything and it's a, you, have to, you simply have to redo it. I did, yeah. It's a ton, ton more work only because you didn't read ahead. I, there are other books. I did a book, uh, Democracy's Right and Democracy's Might. There's two, there's three books. I've done two so far. And I'll tell you what, they, they started, I read, I started reading through, and they kept on these wonderful characters. You know, these space characters, like a Star Wars kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you get these generals and pilots and stuff, and it begins with all the stuff about them, a huge backstory, and then they get blown up by three pages in. <laughs> Every single one. So I have all these character voices. So I said, screw it. After I realized they're all getting killed, I gave, I started doing any impersonation I felt like. <laughs> you can have fun with it. But I had to read ahead to make sure they, that man, woman, or... If they're if they're a space alien, then who cares what they sound like? Of course. But but if it's if they tell you that the guy's Irish, you can't be doing Scots. Right. You know, it's just and and you, ha and you have to read the book to know that. It's the same as knowing the punchline to a joke. Mm -hmm. You know, a joke with no punchline is no joke. So Indeed. that's all. Yeah. 
So you've had your, your session today. How did that go? What, what impressed you about the session? Besides my personal self? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I actually know, I was really pleased that um, they had to bring in like 30 more chairs. I don't think they knew that uh, people were really excited about audiobooks. It's, uh, I think audiobooks and, and um, uh, video games are the two biggest uh, two fastest growth industries yeah. right now in the voiceover industry. So being a part of that, and people were really, really keen to know things. And that, that's always, you, if you know a thing and someone wants to know what you know, it's kind of exciting. It's like, oh my God, someone's interested in my you know, knowledge of cabinet making. You know, so you share that. So they want to they know about They love me. They really love <laughs> me. They like me. <laughs> I'm not a worthless guy. So that was kind of nice. It was nice to see all the people who were interested, and they were absolutely interested. You know, lots of questions, lots of, uh, you can just tell. It was, just, it was really neat. It was really a, a good experience. Welcome back to Mavo 2018. We are now joined by John Florian from VoiceOver Extra, who was our very first live guest on the show. My gosh, was that in this century? When was it? It was actually two years ago, right in this exact spot, actually where your table is now across the hall at Mavo 2016. You have come so fast, so far. Well, it's, it's, it's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, it's to say, but we're, we're still fumbling like always. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, how, four years for you or five years at Mavo? I've been to every one. Okay. Yeah. So tell us what you're looking for when you come to a conference like this. What I look for is newcomers, people who are looking for answers. And, well, at all levels of their career. Because VoiceOver Extra, it's the online news and training resource for the voiceover industry. And I, I want to help people. And we have something for everybody. So I want them to sign up for a free subscription, <laughs> mostly. And in that way, I keep in touch with them daily with new products announcements. And then people can also sign up for our, our uh, news uh, alerts for new articles. And uh, people have told me, they keep consistently telling me to shows like this, that I've helped their careers, and that just makes me feel good. So I want to meet more and more of these people. Yeah, you've definitely helped our careers as well. You were kind enough to put our link to the podcast on your website, and it's, we've definitely gotten a great response from that. It's still there. It's still there, proudly there. We haven't done anything to, to make you drop it yet. Good. <laughs> <laughs> what is your goal? Let me, let me reverse to... Oh, uh, what, okay. what are you doing here? Uh, my goal is to promote our podcast, to get more listeners, and expose some of the people that haven't had as much experience to some of the things we've learned. Basically, the thrust of the whole podcast is to give back the knowledge we've learned from the kind folks like you at VoiceOver Extra, all the coaches and sponsors that are here and back in 2016, and give back to the community. So help people like we've been helped. We have similar intent here. That, that's mm -hmm. good. That's like mine. That's very nice. Yeah, it's a common theme I've heard. I've heard Tom Deere in his presentation yesterday say basically the exact same thing, that he teaches because he wants to give back because of all the all the, the kindness he's been shown over the years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a definitely a different industry than uh, the competitives, the acting, and some other industries that I've been associated with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, very nice. So have you had a chance to attend any sessions? And if so, what was your favorite so far? I have attended a number of one, a number of them. <laughs> and uh, I've been kind of taken with the animation people. I, I, I'm not going to be doing character voices myself, but I just love the way they can just... Uh, Sunday Muse and, and Kerry Waldron can just kind of get into a character so quickly. It is it is so fun to see the, the, the talent that they display. And of course, they're here to share everything that they know, too. So yeah, that's a nice aspect. Yeah, on is amazing. Yeah. We were just in that, that panel with Herb Moore, Kari, Sarah Sherman, and uh, and Sunday. Yep. And my kids were there. because I sat here. behind them. Yeah. <laughs> they met the stars, their shows. Yeah, and now they're inside the session with, with Sarah, who cast Phineas and Ferb, and they're, they're both on cloud nine, so it was a really great oh, thing to see. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. So we're almost done here, but is there anything you're still looking forward to at the conference? <sighs> I'm looking forward to getting back home, inputting all of the names that I've gathered here, and getting to working with people. Getting, getting to really helping them. Well, that's great. Well, yeah. Thanks again for being on this okay. morning, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Now, here, here's a silent handshake. <laughs> thanks, all. Thank you. <laughs> okay, everybody, so we are live at Mavo 2018 with the incomparable Joe Cipriano. How incomparable. Doing, Joe? Thank you, Paul. I like that. Uh, wait, hold on. I'm just going to look that up. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Thank you. So, thanks for joining us. Mm, my pleasure. My first question, and... I'm thinking a lot of our listeners will, will have the same question. As much as I love Val, and she does a great job, when yeah. I saw you were on the schedule, I thought, wow, 
they got Joe Cipriano. <laughs> oh, so tell us, what brings you to a conference like this? Right. Well, and and uh, when we all got together last night, we had, it was a great night last night, first evening, and. Um, they had all of us get up, the presenters, to, to speak and the sponsors and things like that. And, and what I said last night uh, is true. Val reached out to me over a year ago, you know. Maybe it was a year and a half ago, I, you know. And to, to put it on, on the, the schedule. And the reason why I love her energy and I love what she's doing. And I love the fact that it's in this area in Washington, D.C. And that it's bringing um, kind of a big type. Uh, voiceover conference, although in a, a smaller package, to the D.C. area. And for me, uh, I, it's where I started my voiceover career. And that's why I said to Val, listen, you, you got me from the, you know, the letter go, you know, the, the word go. You had me at uh, hello. So yeah, speak. right, exactly. <laughs> um, I, you know, started my career here in, in Washington, D.C. while working in radio. And so coming back here, I have so many great memories here. We come here often because my wife's family uh, lives here. And uh, I met my wife here, you know, in broadcasting at NBC. And we got married here. And then together, two years after we got married, we moved to Los Angeles to pursue our voice, uh, our uh, broadcast career, her in television as a news writer, and me uh, in radio to pay the bills, but to really now go after the type of voiceover career that I had hoped to get, and that was in network promos and things like that. So it's, it's great to be here because this is where it all started for me. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I knew some of those stories because I just got done listening to your fantastic audiobook. Oh, thank you. Uh, Living on Air. I highly recommend you download it because it's done by Joe himself uh, and thank produced you. by the amazing A.J. McKay. A.J. did. A.J. McKay did all of the audio design on it, and uh, it was directed by Maurice Tobias. And um, I, I asked Maurice to do it, and she, uh, and she agreed to do it, and I was so thrilled because I was concerned. I'd never done a long-form sort of thing before, and I wanted her to be on me and so that I wouldn't fall into older habits of <laughs> promo type work and you know I wanted to tell the story and I wanted it to be more of a radio play with sound effects and original music uh, by Greg Chun who did you know some great original music mm -hmm. and um, so yeah it was it was really fun to do that it was uh, it was a thrill by the way I started on my for those of you who are into microphones and things like that oh, and by yeah, the nice. way I always say it ain't about the mic but uh, I started on the 416 doing the audiobook and it was it was just a little too I wouldn't say harsh, but it wasn't warm enough for storytelling. So then I switched to a Neumann U87, which I've had forever, uh, and um, and I think it came out better, and it, it helped. Uh, I think it's it's a warmer sound, and, and it really lends itself to storytelling. I agree. I've done some books on the 416, and sometimes it works, but I found, especially a long-form book, it's fatiguing as a listener. I, think, I was I listening think so. to um, a book Bob Sauer did um, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and... I'm, I'm sorry to tell. I actually told him this, and probably wasn't the best choice of words, but, but I told him it was fatigue on my ears, and he said, "Well, oh, I've never had a problem with it before." <laughs> and he and he walked out in a huff. <laughs> no, he's the second nicest he's, guy in voice. He is. A, he is an happened. awesome guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, did Maurice direct you in person, or did you do it remotely? Yeah, no, we we did most of it in person, uh, and then some of it we did remotely. But most of the time, she came to my home studio uh, to do it, and then she was also on the line. AJ is in Kentucky mm -hmm. uh, so she was on the line with AJ when they were doing the selects um, you know f for that I mean it, it was really a, a, a kind of a it was a bigger production than it needed to be but being the type of you know coming from what I come from uh, radio and wanting to make it sound more like a radio play I, I think I needed to do that and everybody did such a great job on it uh, AJ worked endless hours on it and and that was way back in 2013, and we've been very good friends ever since. I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Have you from listening. AJ, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it never gets old. We always give AJ a hard time. I love AJ. I've worked with him myself. He did my last demo. It's, he's a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic producer. Oh, that's great. that's great. So back to the conference. Mm -hmm. uh, have you been to any sessions yet? Yeah, I was in this morning. 
uh, for uh, Hugh Edwards' uh, opening. And, you know, I, I love, I always sit in on sessions. In fact, as I walked by you, I was just going to go in and sit. Uh, oh, I'm uh, sorry. That's okay. Um, but I always learn, you know, whenever I come to these conferences. And uh, one of the things I picked up about uh, from him, and I've heard it before, but it just, you know, it reminded me of, and I was talking to my wife about it when I went back up to the room, in talking about negotiating with uh, a buyer who wants to have something in per per perpetuity. And uh, the way that he tells, uh, teaches how to negotiate that, it's like, okay, you can have it forever, and it's an evergreen. But that's going to cost this amount. Let's say that it's $2,500. But if you want to do a one-year usage for it, it's going to cost you $750. If you want two years, it'll be you know $1,500. And he says, I guarantee you, they'll look at what the you know the evergreen is and say you know what I'll go for the one year deal and that's the way it, it, it should be um, and then you calendar it and after a year check in with them go hey you know how's that video going and yeah it's going well well let's talk about you know year two let's re up it you know uh, oftentimes they'll say you know what we have new stuff let's redo it and I just think it's it's those kind of things that are the business side of voiceover that is so necessary for people who are coming in and who are already working in voiceover, especially non-union, especially people who don't have agents that are doing that for them. It's so important to know the business side of that. We're back live on the floor at Mabo 2018. It's Sunday, and I'm now joined by JJ Serma. Hey, Paul. How are you doing this morning? I'm going to be way better after I have this coffee, which we uh, stalked out and am now both, so cheers. Yeah, I feel uh, the same way, cheers. Both actually gotten ourselves to where we need to be, awesome. uh, holding a nice cup of coffee on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. So tell me what what brings you to a conference like this. This is your first time at Mabo, right? It is. So I actually um, met Val via email and phone a long time ago, in fact, um, and I take no credit for her success. Her success is all her own, but um, she actually sought me out at, on the Creative Services director of Cumulus DC so I was a production director for local radio stations and somehow we got connected she sought me out by email and we ended up on the phone and at the time I think she was a French teacher and she was still is yeah she still is okay <laughs> she had this voice which when I heard it on the phone kind of put her above the level of email exchanges I have with the basic question how do I get into voiceover because I hear that a lot and so I, I have a sort of a stock answer that I give to people and it's a generous answer but it's a stock answer and then when I got on the phone with her I was like holy goodness you do need to do animation um, and, and, and it's funny because I was actually uh, trying to find a parking space at this school for my daughter's dance recital and there were no spaces. So I, as I drove around for like a half hour trying to wait for someone to leave so I could park and see my daughter's dance recital, I had all this time to talk to Val. And so we ended up on the phone for like, I don't know, a half hour and we had this great conversation. And then a couple years down the road she was like, hey, I'm doing this conference and I, was, I was, wasn't in the best place with voiceover at the time. I was in one of those valleys that uh, Rachel Naylor just talked about and I was kind of feeling negative so I didn't come and Val to her credit had stuck with it this event has grown and finally I've gotten to be here and I'm so excited not only for the possibilities for myself but for my friend and to see Val go from hey I'm a French teacher who wants to do animation to putting together an awesome event like this so I'm, I'm really happy for her yeah it really is fantastic we were here recording in 2016 but it's grown so exponentially not by size because it's it's designed to be small, but in stature and sure. reputation, I think. Well, I think and in value. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, you know, as as someone who's really only been to some smaller conferences, um, you know, sometimes the small is in the the value as well. I mean, you know, some of them are more valuable than others. It's just the nature of those things, and sometimes that depends on where you are in your career and also how you connect with the people that are there. But you know, really, the value of I can't believe it's only been a day and a half that I've been here because I've gotten so much information and so much encouragement and have made some great starts to great relationships so far. So I'm really, really appreciative of, of what she's done and, and also the value of this conference. I agree. Yeah. So tell me what's been your favorite part of either a session or something you heard on the floor. Well... Again, the relationships, um, and you know, I, I had a great conversation the first night. Just kind of, I you know, I, I don't know if it's God or the universe or whatever your belief system is, but I was in the right place at the right time to have a great 
conversation that really reaffirmed how I had kind of gotten through that valley that I had spoken about before. Um, and I didn't really have a lot of the tools and terms to realize sort of emotionally what was going on, but I had put up a lot of resistance in my life to my own success. And now in a, being in a position where I'm much more confident and taking responsibility for my own success, I just feel so much more encouraged. But I gotta say, the coolest thing, and you know what I'm gonna say, <laughs> uh, was being in Joseph Briano's class yesterday and, and reading promo to video with him was just, uh, I mean, he's a legend, that's a once in a lifetime experience, and um, to not have fallen on my face completely, I see as a raging success, so. Welcome back to Mabel 2018. We are live with Gabby Nisico. Hi! How are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you guys doing? We are great. Yes. Hi. So tell us what you were expecting coming to Mabel this year. What was I expecting? Um, what were you looking forward to? Oh gosh, uh, so I think, uh, you know, it's a different group of speakers than some of the other conferences recently, so I was excited about that. Um, of course, uh, Carrie is amazing, so I was like, got to see what she at least, you know, does in the keynote. And um, Herb's here, and I really want to hear his stuff, which is coming up, I think, in like half an hour or so. Yeah. He's going to be yeah. Yeah, doing some things. Um, He's on that panel tomorrow as well. Yes. And I mean, it's just been a great group. It's been a very engaged bunch. I'm, I'm digging it. It's so what are you here promoting? So I'm here on behalf of VO Boss, which is my podcast with Ann Ganguza. Never heard of it. I know. <laughs> it's just this tiny little thing. Nobody knows about us. Uh, <laughs> And then, of course, my YouTube channel, Gift of Gab, and uh, just my stuff as a coach and presenter and speaker and all that good stuff. I've got my books here with me, and it's been a nice time just getting to talk to some new new people. And, um, I, and this is a really, like, on it group, like, very, very sharp. I was expecting, I think, more beginners, and we've got a nice intermediate crowd, which is really great. So we've been... Talking shop. I think it's it's probably about a third newbies or, or beginners. I yeah, think but that's into, but not as seem... much as usually. I mean, usually it's like twice that. So. I think it might be a better educated group of newbies. Mm -hmm. if that's possible. Mm -hmm. Maybe thanks to you. Maybe thanks to us. Who knows? That's pretty cool. But I've talked to people who say they're just getting started, but yet they have gone through training with coaches. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, wow, <laughs> you guys are like on top of it, which is amazing. Well, it's an investment, so I think you want to make sure you've got some ground work late before you come and spend the money and the time, I would hope. And I yeah. feel like we've been saying that for years and it's, people are listening. It's, it's, finally it's, paying it's catching on. I'm like, this is good. Yeah. So have you had a chance to attend any sessions yourself or at least poke your head in? Um, just a couple. Uh, I caught Sunday News for about a half an hour. Um, she's amazing. I, like, I, I don't, I'm, she was just thoroughly and completely entertaining. I don't even know all of what I caught because I feel like I came in a little bit out of context on <laughs> some of it, but it was great what was I saw. Was there dancing? There there was a little bit of dancing. Um, there was I attended the one she did in 2016. There was there a lot was, of dancing. Yeah, there was a yeah. lot of movement. Um, and then Rachel Naylor, of course, uh, I got to, to hear some of hers. Uh, I didn't quite see it, but I heard it through the walls oh, yeah, while I too. was presenting. And yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think we heard that as well, actually. She had some people uh, screaming, and I don't know, there was wolf noises at one yeah, point. Yeah, it was like, like jungle, barking, too. Jungle yeah. book, barky. It was a whole thing. It was very animalistic. I don't know. But everyone seemed to have a good time. Awesome. Excellent. Oh, we're two-thirds of the way through, I guess, now at this point. Would you have another question? No. Uh, it's going fast. Ten time. No? Nope. All right. It's going way too fast. <laughs> Is there anything specifically fast. you're looking forward to on Sunday? Um, Sunday, I think. Uh, no, because I hate the last day. I always hate the last day. I don't want to leave because I, my friends are here, my people, and then I have to go back to my booth all by myself. <laughs> all the teary hugs. Yeah. No, I, yeah, so the last day always stinks. I hate that. Um, but, uh, there are prizes. There are prizes. This is true. We'll be giving some stuff away. I donated a couple books to it. Oh, cool. Yeah, Fantastic. Fun. And, it, and it's Veterans Day, so I think that's the big thing I'm looking forward to is thanking, thanking some vets and people who have, uh, you know, dedicated time and service to the country. And Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to giving them a little pat on the back.
<laughs> All right. Well, Gabby, thanks for thanks for joining us here and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. So welcome back live to the VL Meter here at Mabo 2018. I am with Dan Friedman. How are you doing, Dan? I'm great. How are you? I am fantastic. So tell us what, or tell me, I'm, a, I'm the only host right now. <laughs> tell me what brings you to a conference like this. What brings me to a conference like this? Well, the people uh, being, you know, basically, as I always say, you know, there's only two kinds of people that spend their lives in dark padded rooms talking to themselves, and we're the kinds you want to be around. <laughs> so for me, uh, it's really just to get out there with uh, colleagues and friends and uh, just enjoy myself. And uh, here I'm, uh, besides re doing my own thing and uh, representing my own company, Sound for VO, I'm here with Sennheiser Microphones, and uh, they provided all the uh, PA systems uh, for the rooms. So uh, I'm here setting those up and making sure everybody has what they need and uh, just kind of making it happen. And we thank thank you for being here and thanks Sennheiser for, for being the equipment provider absolutely. again. They, they are awesome. <laughs> Indeed. I use a Sennheiser microphone myself. Yes, absolutely. So what have you experienced so far? Have you been in any sessions? Have you poked your head into any of the rooms? Uh, I poked my head, uh, head in here and there. Uh, so a little bit of Tom Deere doing the business stuff. Uh, Celia Siegel, who's just always amazing with her branding stuff. Um, and uh, of course, the opening session this morning, uh, and it was you know it's all, it's all been great, just totally uh, a good time as always. So you might have seen during Hugh's session, he raised he had people raise their hand if it was their first time at a conference. As an engineer, what would you say is most important for someone just starting out uh, to get from a conference like this? Reaching out to people. Don't be afraid to talk to anybody here that is mentoring. Um, that's you know, we're here because we want to be a part of the community and to help everybody and just make it better for everybody. And if people are reluctant to reach out to us and talk to us, then they aren't going to experience the full uh, effect of you know, what we are here to help them do. And that's really succeed in their career and also to just help the industry in general. And it's so crazy right now uh, as an industry. So this is just a really great opportunity to um, learn how to do it right. Okay, great. And as a vet, someone who's been here maybe to the conference before or they've been to other conferences, what's a good way to approach um, a conference as a veteran? Well, uh, again, it's really connecting, I think, with the other people. Uh, you know, all of us have our strengths and our weaknesses. So I know for me, even though I've been in this business 20 years, I'm always ready to learn from somebody else. Uh, I never think that I know everything. Um, there's always something that one of my colleagues and friends has to offer that uh, maybe I just, uh, you know, maybe it's a weakness for me, either the business side or something like that. So I'm always excited to uh, talk to them and to also see how they've developed over time because a lot of us that uh, I've been going to conferences now for you know, probably, I don't know, at least getting uh, 10 years maybe, um, you know, to see how they've grown own too in their own businesses so it's it's exciting I think for all of us to really uh, kind of come up together in, in, in a lot of ways so we're live at the Mabo 2018 conference on Sunday towards the end and I'm joined by Celia Siegel tell Hello. me about your business and what brings you to a conference like this you know I came here to talk about my favorite thing branding um, so I did a talk on um, branding and how um, to use that to catapult your business as sort of a superpower, an extra thing on top of all of your other talents, how much it can put you on the map, voiceover wise. Um, and then I'm doing a breakout session today with a group of 12 people and we're really going to dig in and try to really nail down each individual's brand um, through some exercises that I do and listening to people's demos and we're going to workshop it as a group. Oh, awesome. And people will walk away with a really good sense of how to platform themselves and talk about themselves. Great. Now, what have you? What sessions have you attended other than your own? Have you uh, gone into any rooms and poked your head in? What's impressed I you have. so far? Oh my gosh, everybody's been so great. So I've never been to Mavo. It's my first Mavo. So I was so excited Val asked me to come, and I didn't know much about it. Everything I've been to has been amazing. Um, it's very, a um, lot of great animation stuff here. Um, so, um, Kari Walgren, um, it's been so fun to meet her. Um, she's actually at the agency that I worked at when I was in Los Angeles, so we just missed each other. 
so we have a lot of people in common and um, she's just fabulous and so giving um, all of the talent here are raving about how much she's connecting with everybody and just really sharing and giving um, Sarah Sherman's been a wealth of information from that casting director perspective um, and they did something together from the talent perspective casting director perspective um, I just came out of Rachel Naylor's session on networking and I feel personally jazzed like I, I love coming to these things as an entrepreneur just to learn for myself and get you know filled up for myself in my business so hers was amazing um, I have my schedule in front of me. I've been doing like, ton, tons of great stuff and, and great talent here. Um, awesome. People are sponging it up. So what would you say is your biggest takeaway now that we're two-thirds of the way through the conference? Well, I'll give you an example. I just had J.J. Serma here talking about it, and we talked about how the, the down-to-earthness of the presenters is so evident, that people are really willing to share totally. what they've learned, and not in, in, a, in an aggressive way. They're really willing to have totally. that, that communal aspect. And that's, yeah. that's what I've been impressed with, and JJ thought that as well. Yeah, no, I would agree. Um, it's a small conference, which I've been so excited. And, you know, I love the big, busy conferences are so exciting and you know, stimulating, and you're bouncing, and I was like, oh, 104 people. I'm going to get to meet everybody, talk to everybody, and it does. It feels like a really casual sort of cocktail party, you know, office mm -hmm. party where everybody is connecting. So there is a really nice, even plane, and the, the sessions are small. So, yeah, it seems like everybody is talking to the presenters and everybody's being really sharing. Um, Johnny Heller last night was just saying, you know, I'm here to work. I want to, like, connect with people and, you know, give people what they came for. So, yes, I would agree with that. Yeah, I like that feeling as well. Uh, we've both been to VO Atlanta. And yeah. sometimes you get to the bed at night or sometimes the next morning and you yes. think it's like Vegas. Your head's spinning or, or Wobocon right now totally. is going on. But it's here, true. I actually went home last night because I live in nearby Baltimore, as we talked about, and brought my kids back for the program with Sarah. Oh, fun! But I got Lucky home kids. and yeah, they're, they're, they're having a great time. But I got home and fell right to sleep, yeah. and it was like a normal night, which sometimes is just nice. <laughs> yeah, no, it's got space between things, but you're not bored. No. So there's like a just enough. It's a just about right. Now, nope, I feel the same way. Like not. You know, it's fun to be overstimulated after talking to, you know, 700 people in a day, mm -hmm. you know, but it feels like your own wedding, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I, I got like 45 seconds with everybody. So, yeah, this has been great. Welcome back to Mabel 2018. Ken and I are now joined by Bridget Real. Hey, hey. It's going. I'm going to shake your hand even though no one can see me shaking your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are representing Gravy for the Brain here this weekend, correct? Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. What brings uh, Gravy for the Brain and you personally to Mabel? Uh, so I've been with Gravy for the Brain for almost a, well, for about a year now. And uh, it isn't, for those who don't know what it is, it is the online uh, educational and small business resources for voice actors. Uh, we have, I think, 20 online courses that people can get uh, that give them the basics of voiceover, technique, home studio, things like that. We have over 200 hours of content uh, in webinars and VO mentoring. Uh, we do four webinars a month, uh, one that is a voiceover genre technique specific, one that is uh, studio tech, one that is business and marketing, and one that's a wild card. We do one Q&A uh, live mentoring a week, again, uh, two VO, one home studio tech, and one uh, business and marketing. And all of that is uploaded onto our site. We also have... Uh, a CRM, we have contracts and templates for people, we have a career profile website which you don't have to be a member for and everyone should have because that puts you into our VO talent finder. I call it the snapshot resume so even like we all have websites but you, on this you put your up to six demos, your bio, your agents, all your contact information. You can break down all of your credits into uh, on camera, off camera, singing, VO, and you can get into genre specific VO, add your links, things like that. That goes into the talent finder, but you can also put a footer in your signature or on your website. And if somebody hits it, it automatically pops it up. And when you look at it, it really does look like a snapshot resume. So it's really cool. You don't have to be a member for that, so that's free regardless. So we just like to share, share the love and there's so much information out there and we're just really trying to guide people and help them feel like 
they have some sort of a success and some sort of a path that they can follow to kind of get them up and running and get their businesses thriving. So. That's awesome. and you gave your first uh, presentation this morning, right? For I beginners. gave my first live presentation. It was Yay. fun. Yeah. I did this webinar, uh, the Beginners Roundtable for Gravy for the Brain, uh, about five months ago, I think. And it seemed to go over really well. And uh, Val asked if we could do something else as in, in addition to Hugh's amazing presentation the other day. And Hugh said, hey, would you want to do it? And I said, sure. Actually, I think originally he asked me to do something different. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, will you do the Beginner's Roundtable? And I was like, yes. So that was a lot of fun. I forgot nothing about great reviews. Yeah. I was not able to attend because I was bringing the uh, little guys down, uh, down the beltway. But I heard, great, I heard great things. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yep. I hope so. I hope it was valuable to people. I mean, I tell people all the time, I'm not a coach. I'm not a mentor. I'm a voice actor. And I've been doing this for five years. So now my job is to send the elevator back down for the next person who's coming up. I'm, I'm trying to help people out, you know? Yep. It's a great analogy. Paying it back. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, exactly. Pay it back, pay it forward. Help the next person out. Welcome back to Mavo 2018. We are live now with Bob Johnson, who uh, I met last time I was No, I didn't meet you last time I was here. I met you just after this conference, and we said next time we have Mavo, we have to get together. So welcome. Thanks yeah, for being here. Yeah, because it was 2016, and I'm saying, you were at Mavo? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see you there. Yeah. I, I was kind of a whirlwind that, that day, as I was talking about during our, our intro last night. It was our third episode ever. And Sean and I were running around like chickens with our heads cut off because we had no earthly idea what we were doing and right, just trying right. to get things organized. We're a little bit better now, marginally. So good to see you again. This is my fourth Mavo. I've been here since 2014. Wow. 14, 15, did 16, and then this one. Awesome. So as a, a veteran of the conference, what are you looking to, uh, to accomplish this year? Uh, for this particular conference, it's the level of presenters that they have. Uh, and again, from year to year, this conference just continues to grow and get bigger, uh, both in participants but also uh, the presenters as well. And so, you know, getting ready to, to, to hear Armin talk about Bidalgo, to hear uh, Gabby talk about um, conversational reads, to Johnny Heller and audiobooks. Um, I mean, across the board, where, whatever level you are uh, as a voice actor, uh, or whatever genre you want, you have some element of it here at Mavo. So that's what makes this conference great. Yeah, I agree. And I would agree that the, the caliber of presenters is just amazing. I sat right here with Joe Cipriano this morning. And Joe I said, Cip, I didn't even mention yeah. him. I, I said to him, <laughs> as, as much as I admire what Val's done, when I saw he was on the schedule too, I said, what? Right, right. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be exciting. Yeah, it just kept coming and coming. And I'm like, wow, this is getting huge. Uh -huh, I agree. So what have you done so far today? Have you had any sessions that you were sitting in on? Uh, the only, I, I have a session coming up with Johnny Heller, uh, and I have another one tomorrow with Johnny Heller, I think, as well. Uh, I did one with Gabby with conversational reads, which is always interesting. Uh, I did one with Tom Deere today talking about um, uh, the strategy behind this, and you're all reminded that this is a business first. Mm -hmm. And you're always scratching down notes and saying, all right, mission plan, goals, and you know, vision statements of that thing. So, uh, but yeah, overall, yeah, it's been great. Uh, met uh, a lot of people who've been here before. What struck me uh, this year when we were talking is the number of new people here, uh, and specific to folks in the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh, folks that have been doing voiceovers, uh, but others who, quite frankly, haven't done anything in the voiceover world, but want to come here and try to try to get involved in it in some way. Yeah, I noticed that as well. This morning when Hugh Edwards, uh, at the opening sessions, asked everybody how long they've been doing this, he said, show of hands, who's never been to a voiceover conference? And almost half the room raised their hands. Right, yeah. And I was amazed at just the sheer amount of talent in this area because I don't often see it. You know, we lock ourselves in our little boxes, or you're about to lock yourself in your new little box. <laughs> How about that, huh? I like that. Uh, and you just don't see those people right. very often unless you're at a conference like this. And that's the beauty of the conferences is that you get out, you get to meet people, you can talk about room tone and actually have an interesting conversation mm -hmm. about it. Uh, but at the same time, you realize, wow, you know, we're only a few miles apart. Yeah. Uh, and even if you're, you're half hour to an hour, D.C. area being maybe two hours away, you're really not that far away from people. So there is a good, rich community here 
uh, to get together with. And it's nice that Val puts this stuff together for all of us to sort of come out, as opposed to, uh, I, I usually do APAC as well, and that's always a good one. And I'm doing voiceover Atlanta this okay. year as well. I'll be there so, as well. All right, good. We are back live on Sunday morning at Mavo 2018, and we are joined by Armin Hirschetter, first thing, and Ken is here as well. How are you, Armin? Hi, Paul. Hi, Ken. Uh, I'm great. Thanks for having me. So tell us why you come to a conference like Mavo. I'm always looking forward to be interviewed by people like you. That's why I'm here. No kidding. <laughs> no, um, Val asked me if I would like to do a talk on, on Marvel. I would like to get a, a sponsor uh, for, for Marvel 2018. And I thought, yeah, that's a nice thing. And just to find out uh, a week later that another conference booked exactly the same weekend, which I really I hadn't heard that. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't heard of it either afterwards. No, no, what a shame. But it's a different story. No, and of course, always connecting to the talent is very, very important. There are many um, talents that are just about to start their career and to put them on the right tracks um, and, and to see what they're up to, what their problems and issues are, how they approach uh, online casting. And, and, and to teach them what to do, what to avoid in the online casting world, to get the inspiration from, from, the, from the vets. Uh, so many things why I always love to come here. And I can get away uh, of Europe for a few days and, and I use it as a, a little breakaway from, from, the, from the usual day-to-day -day business. That's great. So you're here representing Bidalgo, obviously. Tell us how Bidalgo can benefit from the attendees at the conference or how you can benefit the, the, uh, the talent that's here. Well, the, the talents that have no clue about the online casting world whatsoever because they're just starting, uh, for them it's, it's, it's good to know, okay, how, how does online casting work and, 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 and what to do and the tips and tricks in my talk that I gave about online casting. So they, they can benefit from them. Uh, new talents or talents, aspiring talents can also learn uh, is uh, how to use technology like Bodolga Call where you can uh, have a session over the internet uh, in hi-fi quality and you don't have to pay for it because it's completely for free and still the people don't use it oh god don't. No. <laughs> don't understand that it's a phenomenal service i really do not understand why people aren't I, I, I think i think it has to do with because it's it's also connected to bodalgo uh studios might have a, an issue with like they don't want to have their clients looking at a voiceover casting website because then the clients might not go to the studio anymore that that is doing the session, but maybe casting the voices directly themselves on Bodalgo. So it, it could alienate uh, some people from using it because it's also an online casting service. But anyway, it works nice. Um, and, and, uh, You've actually tried to, to help with that by offering a matchmaking service yourself. Do you still offer that? I, I was trying to explain to, to talents if they are approached by somebody else um, that need a voice and the, the talents themselves cannot fulfill that role, they should tell their clients, well, use Bodalgo, because it doesn't hurt them. And if everybody does that, well, then uh, there are much more jobs on Bodalgo, which is like kind of the ethical uh, online casting website. And they're not going to, to anybody like, like Fiverr, VDC, and so, so it's good for everybody. Uh, sort of a related question for Kari and Sunday. Do either of you have a home studio? And if you do, how much do you use it? I, I, I do not have a home studio. I do record at home, so I have a setup, but I don't have a studio. I just kind of need it. I go into auditions, I self-tape, and, and then as far as recording on shows, I mean, I'm, I'm in Toronto at the actual studio. I have a home studio, but I do find that most of the work that I do ends up being out at a studio as well. Um, if you are more interested in promo, uh, if you are more interested in uh, uh, network branding, like for radio stations and things like that, you've got to have a home studio. That is broadcast quality because uh, with my friends I know that do promo um, you know they're kind of on call almost it's it's very lucrative but they're on call all day long so that the second that Fox calls them and says we need tonight and nine you know that they can record that from their house and send it to them immediately uh, you know I did one one radio branding campaign for a radio station in uh, Arizona for a couple of years 
and and it was actually for me it was really stressful because the turnover was so fast and then if I was out doing three sessions during the day for you know animation studios there would be this crunch to try to get that stuff to them on time and and for people that are interested in like the radio brand is like 98.1 or whatever. If you're interested in that, uh, one of the cool things that I've learned is that it's about quantity because those places will pay you uh, a lot of times like a retainer fee and stuff. So, so a lot of people that do that, they represent like 40 different stations. So they're just constant, constantly, constantly doing it. So, you know, I was the tool that was like just doing it for one, one place. But it's a, uh, in those cases, your home studio, you've got to be aware that that's going to be, you know, broadcast. That's what they're going to use. Uh, so for me, most of the time, what I use mine for is auditions. Uh, every once in a while, uh, it, it's it's good enough quality to use for, you know, for use on a TV commercial demo or uh, for the radio network. Uh, branding. Uh, so you just kind of have to to look at what your goals are. Um, if you're mostly auditioning for just TV and radio, VO, and animation things, just make sure that it's audition quality. Okay, we're back live at Mabo 2018 with Anna and Joseph Stefano, who just got done the first ever kids program. So guys, what do you think of that? Um, well, it was very long. <laughs> It was, it was pretty fun though, we got to do a lot of script reading and we did a table read and we were able to criticize each other's um, performances. I should know that they're both eating mints right now from the room, so if they don't sound like they're doing professional voiceover work, that's why. Yeah. Alright, so Joseph, what did you think of the session? I think it was really cool and um, I learned a lot, I thought I did really well, but then the teachers like try to do this try to do this so I learned a lot from that so that you tried it and then Sarah told you how to do it a little bit differently yes yeah well, that's how the job works for the most part so hopefully we'll, we'll do more of that any other things that you thought were cool Anna or were hard uh, yeah I liked it a lot I thought it would be more like just you know talking like I do at home but it was a uh, cartoon thing so I, it was a lot like the drama camp. It was kind of like a play because at the end we got scripts and we got to read through them and do a table read. So I like that. And I, I liked how you could give feedback on the person um, reading the, their lines and everything. You liked giving other people feedback? No. Pretty much everybody gave feedback on every line that I said. Oh, okay. So do you guys think you could do cartoons? Uh, yeah. A lot more help, yeah. With Possibly. a lot more help? Yeah. I think I could, just, just might need a little more help. <laughs> Alright, well great job guys, I'm glad you are able to come here and have some fun. And uh, we want to thank Val for setting up the kids program and Sarah Sherman for running it. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. All right, so what do you think, Sean? That was pretty cool, huh? It was amazing. Oh, man, I just... Uh, last couple of weeks, I've just been so jealous between Wovo and Mavo and Sovas and so many abbreviations, but... <laughs> yeah, I was pretty jealous a... myself about, about Sovas, especially the people who went straight from uh, Mavo out there. Oh, I know. So, uh, yeah, like uh, Joe Cipriano, for instance. We talked to him at Mavo, and then I just saw pictures of him over the weekend at Sovas. 
Man, that's so. Uh, it's got to be exhausting going to so many cons. But it's it's amazing that people like at the top of their field, like Joe Cipriano or Sarah Sherman, and Kari Walgren are willing to be so generous with their time and make these appearances at these conventions, so people can kind of like and help out aspiring talent or those who are aspiring to reach a new level of talent in their careers. So thank you, Joe and Kari and. Uh, Val and all of the wonderful people who put these events together and just get such dynamite guests to appear. So thank you all so much. Yeah, what what we found was that although it is imp an impressive list of of uh, characters, so to speak, that were at Mavo presenting or as sponsors, everybody sort of had the same theme when we were talking to them that they really enjoyed being part of the community, being uh, giving back to the community. Tom Deere talked about. The whole reason he teaches is because he feels like he needs to give back to the community that helped him get started. And you and I have talked about how that's the entire thrust of this show, basically. And Joe Cipriano said how he just loves being communal. He he sits down and talks to people, not just during his sessions, but at lunch, um, at dinner. He will actually engage people and purposely dresses up is something he mentioned, which I thought was pretty cool, yeah. because he wants to seem like it's an important event and because people have been there, have paid money or given up their time to be there, he feels like he should reciprocate by treating it as a professional event. That's wonderful. Like making sure they get their money's worth. And he, like, I'm sure you, like, you talked with him at the event, and he's just so. Yeah, I may have mentioned his name like 27 times during the other interviews. I was being <laughs> teased by AJ McKay about that because I used to get on him about doing that, and here I am saying, "Hey, did you hear we talked to Joseph Brown?" <laughs> I'm a friend of a friend of Joseph's. <laughs> oh, that got kind of ridiculous. Uh, but, I mean, like, for someone at that level of success, he's just, he's so humble and so friendly and approachable and just a charming gentleman. So, so yeah, he actually you, came for... to lunch, sat down, and my kids were there with me because they were part of the program with Sarah Sherman, um, the kids' program. I'd actually dragged them over to meet the kids earlier in the morning. And he came to lunch and called them both out by name and said, Hey, how was your session? And they were kind of blown away by that because on the drive down, I had said, he's the guy that used to introduce the Simpsons. Or still does, I guess. Yeah, he still introduces the Simpsons. Crazy Tonight stuff. Fox. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. But he wasn't the only one who was so generous with their time. Um, Hugh Edwards was there to, to do the opening ceremony, the opening session, and then flew to Vegas immediately after that to finish up at Wobocon. So if you saw pictures of him in in D.C. and also Wobicon in Vegas, those weren't cardboard cutouts. He actually did go to both. It was crazy. <laughs> now that's commitment. That's amazing. And Rachel Naylor was so generous with her time. Um, Kari, again, so approachable and, and easy to talk to. I met her within like five minutes of being in, in the hotel. Um, Gabby Nistico, also very friendly, talking on the floor with everybody. She was there with an with a exhibitor's booth as well. Not with the podcast, though, because uh, we were the official podcast partner. <laughs> <laughs> but it was Gabby's so great, though. I've I've done some radio imaging workshops with her in the past through GBA, and she's just a hoot. I mean, she's so much fun to work with. Yeah, and someone else who uh, I had a lot of fun with was um, Stanley Fisher. He's uh, runs the company My Demo Dude, um, as well as Stanley hmm. Fisher Creative. We talked to him. And that's an interview that you probably have heard by now if you're listening to the show. But he's a local guy based here in Baltimore, and that was really cool to hear because there's not a whole lot of voiceover talent or especially you no know, demo producers that I'm aware of in this area. Um, Stanley's only been here for about a year. So he's the first one I'm aware of that really produces demos specifically for voiceover in the Baltimore City area. Excellent. But, but all in all, it was, it was a great show. We thank you for joining us through our sponsor, IPDTL, even as short as it was. That was fun. And we want to thank Ken for, for being our wingman on, on the floor and helping out with some of the interviews. Awesome. I had this interesting moment because I reached out to Paul Strequerda after I got the Gefell. And I was just like, I, like for me, this is more than just an expensive mic. It's a symbol of like the level of talent and professionalism that I aspire to. And, and he said, being able well, to you're not there yet, kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> even I, even I was like, I don't even know if I'm there yet. But um, 
but like I want to earn that. And if there was anything that I can do for him, because he's always been a source of inspiration and aspiration over the years, please let me know. And he's like, all I ask is that you give back and pay it forward. And you guys already are with your podcast and all of your helpful posts online. So that was really touching to hear from from a very like respected mentor. So if you're listening, Paul, thank you so much for that. And we'll just keep trying to give back just like you asked. He's become really a, a big advocate for us. He's always liking and retweeting our, our posts, always put, talking us up in, in social media. So I really appreciate his support, too. All right, so uh, we've got some exciting episodes coming up. Uh, next time we have some guests from the VOC, the VoiceOver Collective, and we're going to talk about the importance of accountability groups and educational groups and inspiring a sense of community within the VO community. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for listening to this one, and we hope to see you on the next VO Meter. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to this episode of the VO Meter. To follow along, visit us at www.vometer.com. Vometer is powered by IPDTL.